great. Well, welcome everybody. For those of you who normally are here during the year for Bible study, welcome back. For those of you that don't normally come, it's great to have you here tonight. Uh, FYI, I know it's like 137 degrees out, but there is coffee and tea <laughs> if you would like some. And there's some cookies up there, homemade by one of our good Christian ladies, uh, Mrs. Smith here. So if you like them, be sure to tell her they're lovely. And uh, feel free to get up anytime you need anything. But let's begin with a word of prayer. After Linda's After phone stops phone <laughs> spelling at us, yes. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are a God that we can talk to, a God who listens, a God who desires to have a relationship with us. Lord, we have come tonight because we are seeking to be better at that, to be better in prayer, to learn what you would teach us tonight. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this opportunity to get together and have a discussion. We ask your blessing upon us. Lord, send your Holy Spirit to move among us and help us to hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm sorry? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was so confused there. Well, I have a big Well, so we can hear. I wish you'd speak. Okay, now I get you. Oh, I'm sorry. I should put it on the line. I'm trying to spell your name. A-N-E-U-R-Y-S-M. All right, so... We have Bible study during the school year, and we have it every week, and we start at chapter one, and we keep working through whatever book we're in, and that's a fantastic way to do things, but I know not everybody can commit to doing a week-by-week-by-week -week -week Bible study, and you're always welcome to just come to whatever studies you can. You don't have to come to them all, obviously. But what I like about the summer book studies is this is a one and done. You know, it's a low level of commitment. And for some people, that's all they can manage, right? Because you're committed to about 300 other things. And so I'm glad that you all, and plus I know we have a lot of readers here in the congregation. And so all through the year, as I'm reading books, I'm constantly thinking, is this one I want to use? And sometimes it's like, that's a really good book. It's way too long, you know? Or that's a really good book, but I don't know that it would appeal to a broad audience. I can think of a few people that would like it, but I don't know that it's for everybody. When I read this book, I immediately knew I've got one of my summer book studies. I had never read anything by J.D. Greer before, but interestingly, after reading this, I went to a conference and I heard him speak, and it, it's rare that somebody is as good a speaker as they are a writer. That's unusual. Most people are good at one or the other. I think he's fantastic at both. So I've heard some of you say, I just kind of want to take pulse here. Was this a worthwhile book to read? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's his sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, isn't he? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're this far. We've gone going. Yeah. <laughs> Good. You turn the page. Yeah. And what he says with parenting. I mean, in that front one parenthesis, he says um, that he can hear us laughing. And yeah. I'm thinking, I was laughing. <laughs> yeah. His yeah. Humor that's great. Wonderful. His humor is amazing. Well, that's my first question, Dad. He starts out with the assumption that we need a book on prayer. Do we need another book on prayer? Is that something that you struggle with or something that you're aware you need to grow in? I mean, was this a topic we needed to talk about? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. To come back to it for me. Yeah. yeah. I know how to was do it, faithful right? and then go away. Yeah. And well, I'm learning. <laughs> I let me tell you, I needed it as much as anybody. So it's it's. I think 
It's very instructive to me, and I know we talked about it a couple Sundays ago. When the disciples came to Jesus, they didn't say, teach me how to preach. They didn't say, teach me how to cast out demons. They didn't say, teach me how to do miracles. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful example. Right. I like how he suggests to pray out loud. Yeah. Okay. That has helped me when I was by myself, obviously. It looks a little weird in Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, walking up and down the aisle. <laughs> He's talking to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you wear, did you hear Pam? She said, "If you wear a mask, it's okay." <laughs> so, I mean, he starts out the very first sentence. Let's be honest; most of us do not have a happy, healthy prayer life. If you want to embarrass somebody, ask them to tell the details of their personal prayer life. Yeah, I pray all day long, but I'm not good at. Talk. And that's prayer. Yeah, there's there's more than one kind. I mean, it doesn't go into that, but there's the, I've made an appointment, I'm going to sit down, and this is what I'm going to yeah. do at this time, and I've got maybe a list of people I want to pray. I take yeah. a bulletin home, I want to pray through that list, or I've got a prayer journal or something. And then there's the, you're going on a walk. Like you, that beautiful sky. Yeah, and just whatever comes in your head, you say to God. Well, you know, I haven't seen one of those kind of words Spontaneous, or, and both, both are good. Both are needed. And I think some of us excel at one and not at the other. I think one thing that really hit me, because <coughs> my friend Trish, who's my mentor and prayer warrior, uh, we've been talking about our children because her two children and two of my three children are not going to church. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've prayed about it. You know, I'll pray about it this week, pray about it. No, I should be praying every day. Mm -hmm. I should lay it at his feet every day because it's that important. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I should know that I, sh I should have known that I should have been doing that. And I'm so glad that he reminded me. Yeah. You're, you're, you're jumping to the next question, but that's okay. Oh, I, before we get there, I just want to make sure, page 18, he gives us the purpose of the book at the end of the introduction. Here's my one driving conviction behind this book. We can enjoy the same source of power that our Lord and the early church did when we learn to depend on the Father like they did. Prophet Isaiah tells us that his arm is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear dull, that he cannot hear, and he has not changed. We just need to ask. And right before that, he went through all the times that Jesus prayed, and all the times that the apostles in the book of Acts prayed. And he said, what was fundamental for the early church has become supplemental in the 21st century. And I read that and went, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So chapter one, right at the very beginning, to piggyback on what Linda was saying here, he says our prayers must be, this is page 28, desperate, bold, and persistent. Desperate, bold, and persistent. What does that mean? Yeah. We got a bugging. It's like the story about the, the lady with the judge, and she, you know, basically he grants her wish because she's over and over and over again saying it. And so, you know, she got what she wanted. Mm -hmm. But persistent, we just need to keep praying. It's like that Matthew, I think it's Matthew, the don't stop praying. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. John? We do. We, we give up too quickly. We do. Yeah, he says you give up too quickly. Maybe he hasn't answered you. Yeah. Because you gave up too quickly. Yeah. In desperation. <coughs> yeah. Pray in desperation. Leaning on him and not on yourself. Have you noticed how much more you pray when something has gone wrong? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When you're sick. Mm -hmm. When someone you love is sick. When you enough money to pay the bills when somebody's in there. You are on here and you keep on praying, keep on praying because you see how much you need it. And you're desperate. 
And the, the truth is, we're actually that desperate all the time. We just don't see it. You know? And what he's saying here in this first chapter is the key is to remember, A, who we're talking to. Mm -hmm. B, what he's promised. He's promised to hear us. He's promised he's got unlimited resources for us. He's promised if we're in Christ, we have access to every spiritual blessing, every single one of them. And he delights in it. And he delights in it, like a father delights in giving good things to his children. So remember who we're talking to. Remember what he can do and who he is. And then remember how much you need him. Well, if I remember those things, that's more than half the battle, right? The problem is having the brain cells to rub together. You know, remembering and not slipping off into, I'm fine. Um, I think it would be really a whole lot easier to pray if you had him sitting there with you. Say what? And I why do you know I'm hugging you? She says she thinks it would be easier if there was someone you could see and touch. And I understand why you want to think that, but remember the disciples had that. And Peter still denied knowing him, and Judas still betrayed him. So I wonder. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe for a time, but I think we'd get used to it, and we'd forget. I just want his arm around me. Yeah. They are. It is. They are. So, yeah, he uses two parables here from Luke 11. The man asking the neighbor for bread, and then the widow that Linda was uh, citing before. And he says, page 27, God only gives some things in response to ongoing, patient, relentless, impudent, bold, shamelessly persistent prayer. God delights to share his power with those who are bold enough to bother him. Um, and it's not just because he's delighting in watching you twist at the end of your rope there. It's because, we'll go on in the next chapter to see, he's using this to stretch us and grow us and teach us so that we become better people. It's, you know, using the parenting image again. If you stop your child from falling down, Every time they start to toddle, they'll never learn, right? They actually won't develop the muscles. You need to let them <coughs> fall down sometimes and get themselves back up, or you're going to keep them a baby. And so I think that's sometimes what God is doing for us. Stopping us from being spiritual infants. Time to become toddlers. <laughs> Karen. Um. As you know, I have a twin brother, and I didn't walk until I was 18 months old. And they had called the doctor, and at that time, and at cave age. They had doctors back then? Yes. And he came to the house to see why Karen couldn't walk. And my brother, we called him Pete, uh, walked in the room, and I pointed to something and said, Pete. And he went over and picked it up. Oh. Well, <laughs> you little dictator. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know what you speak about falling. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing I, I was thinking about today, um, how many prayers God receives every day from his children. All of his children, millions and millions, millions. <coughs> and I got to thinking, if I'm praying for something, maybe my answer through God is in one of my his other children who will be helping me. Um, we're all family, mm -hmm. and you never know when that prayer is going to be answered by God's plan for both of you. And it just amazes me how awesome and gracious our Father really is mm -hmm. and hearing every single prayer. 
Yeah, and taking each one seriously. Uh, I have two daughters, and uh, okay, one he gets this, one he doesn't. You know, that was true. And so it, it just. You picked your favorite one that day and yeah. made that dessert. <laughs> Always the favorite one. But, <laughs> you know, it just amazes I know it changes from day to day. We tease my mom about that all the time. Oh, you're the good child today. Okay, good. It was your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jesus didn't save us by teaching us principles, page 31. He saved us by offering us resurrection power. Jesus did not come down to impart a manual for us to live by, but a spirit to live in and through us. And the more we recognize our need for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the more we'll pray to tap into that power. It's, you know, he's the vine, we're the branches. If we're not connecting, we're not plugging in, then we're not getting the power that we need. And um, I marked this. I don't remember why I marked this. Um, when we understand who we are, page 33, and from whom we are asking, we will pray boldly, we will pray big, because the closer the relationship, <coughs> the bolder the asking. <coughs> there are people you are close enough, you've known long enough, you feel free to ask them pretty much anything, right? Because you have that kind of a relationship. You could walk in their house, even if they're not there, you wouldn't necessarily do it, but you knew you could. If it was a, if it was a, an emergency, you need to walk in their house and grab something and then tell them later, they'd be like, sure, of course, you know? Mm -hmm. Esther, if I walked in your house and grabbed something, you'd probably be a little upset. I mean, we've known yeah, each other. I what it was. But, yeah, <laughs> we've known each other. My but, last piece of chocolate, maybe not. You'd be upset, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that there's that the closer we are to God, the bolder we are in praying and asking. Um, Joshua, in the, along that line, my daughter was telling me, we were talking about backdoor friends, you know, mm -hmm. the friends who just come in, and, yeah. and she said she was getting out of the shower one day, and she walked in the kitchen, and there was her neighbor from across the street. Oh, my. And she said, what are you doing here? She had their dog, Gizmo, and it got loose. Uh, and so she came and she knocked on the door, but nobody, Stacy yeah, was there. And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be a shock. Yeah, to have the Especially just getting out of the shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the towel around there. I hope so. So I like, I like page 40. Quit praying little prayers. I preached all sermon on this once because I got really annoyed for a while, I've gotten over it mostly, but I got really annoyed when I kept hearing, Pastor, could you pray a little prayer for us? Oh. Could we just have a little prayer? And I just, there are no little prayers. <laughs> that when you're talking to the God of the universe, it's a big deal, you know? Um, but I understand what people are saying when they say that, and I try not to be a jerk about it. But um, quit praying little, pr stop Thinking, and I've heard people, oh, God's so busy. You're listening to other people. No. He's infinite. He's infinite. <laughs> well, sometimes you think, what, what I need is nothing compared to what everybody else needs. You know, it's not going to bother to ask. But I like the line here that says, if it matters to me, it matters to God. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I can remind myself yeah. of that. I, I have prayed for a parking space sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today. Yeah. <laughs> I did at the yeah. VA hospital day. Oh, oh, that's the place to pray. Oh, and then, oh, and then I, got, I got the very first oh, no, stop, and then I saw problems. there are four parking places for combat wounded uh, veterans, oh, and wonderful. I've got a Purple Heart on my. Yeah. And I thought, I need to park there. They've got a valet parking. Like 10. Ten steps closer. All you have to do is pull up to the front. Do they? Yeah, yeah. they park behind you know, all the time. Yeah, that's the way to go. These yeah, things. they got people waiting there for you. You pull up, they and you take your car, park it, yeah. give you a little yeah. ticket, and you come back and get it. It's really nice. Yeah. So chapter two, I I thought this was really a practical chapter 
five possible reasons why God might not be answering the prayer you're praying right now. Not that he's not going to, but five possible reasons why you're not getting an answer right now. Here are the five. You might not actually be a Christian. You've got to say that, right? Because not everyone, just because you stand in a garage, that doesn't make you a car. Because you know, you're sitting in the sanctuary, that doesn't make you a Christian, right? It's got to be. But he's excited when that person answers his first prayer. Oh, yeah. There's rejoicing in heaven. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So basically, you just don't believe that he will. Right. Yeah. Number two, God might be changing you. God may be using this experience to purify you. God's goal is not to give us stuff, but to conform us to the image of Christ. So this experience of having to be patient might be refining us and teaching us. Number three, God may have a bigger, greater plan than what you have in mind. And he uses the example of a toddler asking mom and dad for things that aren't good for them. You know, why can't I have ice cream three times a day? I mean, it sounds good, right? But it wouldn't be. Um, I like the, I've used this quote many times from Tim Keller. God will give you what you would ask for if you knew everything he knew. Yeah. Yeah. And the quote on page 50, at any given point, God is pursuing about 10,000 different good things in your life, and you are usually aware of only about three of them. <laughs> so he's got, he, he may have a bigger plan. Number four, there are miracles, but they're rare. God doesn't often rewrite the rules, and he used the example of, we can pray, Lord, would you please convert all of the people currently living in Afghanistan? <laughs> and God could absolutely do that. But what's the way that he usually converts people? It's through missionaries and teachers and preachers. And the prayer maybe should be, Lord, raise up missionaries and preachers and teachers and witnesses and friends who can do evangelism and all of that. Show that the people in Afghanistan can become believers. I had a car here. Sometimes you just have to trust him. Yeah. And I know I've had a lot that I keep asking to help, and I fretted and I fretted, and then I realized if I would have just waited longer, it came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, that, that's the final reason. Maybe God's saying, wait. Mm -hmm. It's not the time yet. I had to laugh. I um, mentioned to a neighbor that I was coming here tonight, and he said, well, say a prayer for us. I said, well, what specifically? And he says, that we win this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I just well, as long as you're not telling me that you, you're wanting me to ask God to annihilate your... <laughs> right. <laughs> that was good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he ends, not, just because you're not getting an answer doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you, necessarily. It doesn't mean, you know... Think of the greatest example of unanswered prayer. You talk about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Take this cup away. God said no. Think of Paul. Whatever his thorn in the flesh was, and there's all kinds of theories that he asked God to take away, and God said, no, it's good you have this. My grace is sufficient. And by you being weak, you're showing how strong I am to other people. So... But these reasons, did any of them resonate with you? Did any of you go, oh, yeah, I've been there? Every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be know what Paul story in his spine was. Did they, is that ever it's been? never told. There's all kinds so. of all yeah. kinds of fears. If you can think of it, somebody said it's. Really? Yeah. Only Paul did. Yeah. Paul died. Yeah. So. Chapter 4, 
or excuse me, chapter 3, question 4. Do my prayers change God's mind? I've heard this all the time, right? Why should I bother and pray? God knows everything. God's in charge. Why do I need to pray? Why do I need to? What, what, what's the purpose of that? If it's all predetermined anyway, and God is going to do what God's going to do, and God's going to do what's right, do our prayers change God's mind? How does he answer that? Yeah, I think, yeah. He said, yes, kind of. Sort of. Sort of. Kind of. Yeah. I but think, yes, they do. Yeah. I, I think he God knows, needs to know your in part. advance what And if you don't take it to him, how's he going to help you? He knows your heart, but I think you need to take it to him. You need to take it to him. Yeah. You were saying, Linda? I think he knows in advance what your reaction is going to be, but he he delights in us coming to him and wants us to do that. Yeah. I think the example that he mentioned was Moses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both have. I'm going to wipe them out. Moses says, um, please. <laughs> but I think God knew he wasn't going to wipe them out. I kind of thought maybe God wants to hear Mo Moses and how much he loves those chosen people. But he, God knew that he was not going to. He killed a bunch of them, but yeah. I think God knew what he was going to do, what the outcome was going to be. Maybe he just wanted to hear. I, th I think there are some conditional things that God says, and often we see God relenting from a judgment when there's repentance. Think of Jonah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. You know, I'm going to wipe out the whole town after a five word sermon. The whole town repents, including the animals. They put mourning clothes on the animals, even. I love that detail. Plus, what a sermon. I've preached more than five words, and I haven't seen you all put on mourning clothes. <laughs> well, they're you know. not animals. <laughs> But he says we need to hold three things in tension. God's purposes are unchanging. God's plans are unfolding. And our prayers are instrumental. Somehow all three of those are true at the same time. God's purposes are unchanging. God's plans are unfolding. Our prayers are <coughs> instrumental. And then he says, if you don't get how all of those three things work together, that's OK. What you need to get is this is an invitation for you to participate in what God is doing here on earth. And somehow, mysteriously, he uses our prayers to do for his kingdom to come and his will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. He chooses to use our prayers. Well, wait, does that mean if I don't pray, it's not going to happen? <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because he said that we change yeah. outcomes. Well. We can change outcomes. And that's that blows my mind that God would allow us that. But he says, God has put us in particular situations and particular places. And in those places, we are called to pray and to work for him. And he uses the example of sitting on a plane to Taiwan yeah. with somebody who has been looking for God and was so frustrated that she couldn't find God. And he literally said, look, I'm a pastor. God sat me next to you for a reason. We've got eight hours. Go. Go. Let's <laughs> change the book. Yeah. Yeah. So when we pray, David Platt says, page 72, when we pray... We take our God-given place and use our God-ordained privilege to participate with God in the accomplishment of his purposes on the planet. Know how much, notice how much you keep saying this to God's. But we participate. He's got a plan for us. He's got a place for us. We're called to be obedient. If nothing else, why do we pray? Jesus told us to. Yeah. 
sometimes it comes down to that, because I said so. <laughs> None of you ever use that on your kids, oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> so with chapter four, we get to the second half of the book. And I know we're going quickly, and we'll have time for questions if there's, if there's stuff. But he starts with how not to pray, chapter four. And then moving on from that, how to pray using the Lord's Prayer as a guide. So what are some of the wrong ways that we pray? Can I add more chocolate? Yes. <laughs> That's a wrong way to pray. Yeah. Why? Because you're asking for selfish reasons. You're asking for something that's totally irrelevant. And you're not really focusing on God. And it's not convicting the Lord Christ. <laughs> yeah, he says, page 78, we all instinctively pray the wrong way. We try to use God rather than delighting in God mm -hmm. and in his beauty. And notice... Like the, like the prayer to win the game? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. There was a, a funny, I think it was a far side cartoon where one side was praying for this football team and the other side was praying for this football team and you see the next panel, Jesus in heaven is watching hockey. <laughs> <laughs> That's not theologically correct, by the way. But we all, I mean, notice that the, the way that Jesus taught the model for prayer, it doesn't start with God gimme. We get there, and we're invited to pray for the past, the present, and the future. So what's not included in there? What can we not pray about? It's the past, the present, and the future. Forgive me my sins. Give me what I need today. Deliver me from evil tomorrow. That covers pretty much everything. But Jesus says, before you do that, how will it how be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Praise you. How of you are the most important thing to me. You are beautiful. You are great. You are wonderful. Sometimes I need to remind myself of that, of who I'm talking to. It all of a sudden makes my problems seem a lot smaller when I see how big and how great God is. But we flip it upside down, don't we? Lord, I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. By the way, you're awesome. You're super great. Amen. <laughs> you know, the religious person prays to get something from God. The gospel person prays to get more of God. And here's a question to ask. Are you praying because you have to? Or are you praying because you get to? My mom told me that all the time growing up. Do I have? No, you don't have to. You get to. I get to wash the dishes, thank you. you know? <laughs> but are you praying because you have to or because you get to? Are you coming to worship on Sunday because you have to or because you get to? We grow in the faith when it shifts from one to the other, right? When we shift from the, oh, if I don't go, I'll feel guilty that you know God's going to send a bus to run over me because I didn't go to church. To the, you know what, I need to go to church because God is good. I had a wonderful example. One time, you and Tom were out of town, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Olivia and Tori, I don't know where they were, and Charlie came to church. And I said, Charlie, I, I didn't think we'd see you today because I thought your family was out of town. He's like, well, Mom and Dad are out of town. And Olivia, and I said, and you came to church? He says, well, yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the college age kid who comes to church just because he wants to. Yay! Right? Because we've all seen how many examples of the other. They go out to college and never come, never come back. Never come back. Yeah. Praise God, he grabbed a hold of Charlie. And Olivia and Terry, too. <laughs> Olivia's like, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it. Okay, I was good. just. <laughs> But I like the way he teaches, use the Lord's Prayer as your pattern and just kind of do a jazz riff. Mm -hmm. You know, hallowed be thy name. 
Lord, may your name be hallowed in my life. May your name be hallowed in the life of my family. May your name be hallowed in our church, in our town, among the people who are in government. I mean, you can kind of take that and just kind of play with it. Mm -hmm. May your kingdom come in my life. May your kingdom come in our town, in this person's life, who clearly is not taking your kingdom right now, Lord. No. Oh, give us this day our daily bread. And Lord, I don't just need bread, I need peanut butter too. <laughs> you know? And you can just kind of use that as a pattern and expand upon it. You're praying biblically. You're praying prayers God will hear. And you're not just reciting the words and not really thinking about them. How often have we done that? Oh, mm -hmm. Have you ever started praying a pattern and you're following the rhythm and then there's somebody that's, that doesn't quite get the rhythm sitting near you in church and it throws you or off? Or you have a Methodist in the crowd. We have a Methodist that has trespasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Joshua? Yes. One thing that that I learned here was people say, Sharon, can I pray for you? Uh, no, there are a lot of other people who need more prayer than I do. That was wrong. Mm -hmm. Number two, I always felt if I repeated my prayer request, it meant that I didn't trust God mm -hmm. the first time around. Mm -hmm. um, and you forecast it. I've never asked you for a little prayer. I've always asked you for prayer. Thank you. And, uh, and I, I know that you do pray for me, but there's a part of me that that feels like Satan likes to play with us. Oh, oh yes, he does. Me. Yes, he does. And there's the doubt uh -huh. in our heart. Uh -huh. in our mind. I don't think he puts it in our heart. I think he puts it in our mind that we should question, is this really... Yeah. Something God's going to do through me? Why? For you, really? Yeah. But, well, yeah I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Yeah. Psalm 139. You know, when you read that, it's like a birthday card. He created you, and He's gone with you all the way. He has yeah. everything planned for you. But I, I have learned that, yes, you can pray for me. And two, I'll repeat it as long as I have to, Lord, and you'll have to let me know which way to go. Yeah. And, and as you know, I've been wrestling with a new job, and it's really been very difficult. And I feel like Jacob now. And I'll probably be limping, I don't know. But mm -hmm. anyway, I have to put my trust in what his answer was and go from there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's hard for a lot of us to say, okay, if that's your answer, then I'll accept it and move on. But then the little devil comes in and says, really? Yeah. You know, and plays games with you the whole time you're trying to yeah. play. Distraction. Well, well that, that was the original way he got Adam and Eve. Did God really, really say? Exactly. And he gets you to doubt the word. He gets you to doubt God, he's not really caring for you. And we we still fall for it, you know. I, I, a helpful image, I don't remember if I got it from this book or from another book. Sometimes they start to run together. But again, the parent-child image, it's so useful. Because when, when a child starts to learn to talk, how delighted are we? Mm -hmm. Oh, they and said a new word. Too. Yeah, then we get annoyed and we say, are they ever going to shut up? Yeah. That's where the image breaks down. But, you know, we delight in hearing the child learning how to talk, and we don't get mad at them for saying it wrong. How cute that is. Yeah. Oh, instead of, oh, these two, they're trying to say my name, they're trying to say this, that, whatever. And you could do it, come on, you know, you. that's how God is with our prayers sometimes. I think as we're learning to talk with him, yes, we want to strive to get better. That's why we're studying this and you know reading books like this so we can be better at it. 
but we don't have a God up there with a red pen grading our prayers <laughs> and critiquing. And Linda, I would have answered that prayer, but I'm sorry, it just wasn't, it wasn't holy enough. It wasn't artistic enough. It wasn't beautiful enough. And I've heard people say, oh, you know, I can't pray for a long time because I fall asleep. Well, I do too sometimes. A, how wonderful to fall asleep talking to God. B, when you wake up, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Lord, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. he's not... Oh, well, I would have answered that prayer, but clearly I'm not important. He's not passive aggressively, right. you know, denying our prayers because we got sleepy. He knows how we're made. And I think keeping that in mind, remembering who we're talking to. Well, I liked it in here. I mean, one of the things on page 94, he's like, of all the titles that our sovereign, heavenly, holy God could command us to call him, it's not Almighty One or Lord Conqueror or Exalted King that he chooses. He says, call me Daddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aww. And that next paragraph, recognizing and reveling in the fatherhood right. of God is the engine of the Christian life. Right. You know, that was revolutionary. That's something Jesus turned the Jewish faith upside down. They had never called God Father before. Never. That would have been blasphemous. Nobody would have dared. Mm -hmm. It's always teacher, right? Or Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, you did because you didn't say the name of God. You would have said Adonai, which is Lord, or Elohim, which is God. Right. And because Jesus came, now we are invited as adopted members of the family, co heirs with Christ, that we can call God Father. Even if it's difficult for you because you didn't have a loving father, you know, here's where God's put me in a family now where I have the perfect father. You know, and I, the, all the father I needed and wanted all along, I now have. There's um, nothing wrong with calling the Lord either. Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. No, and, and, and any of those biblical titles are, are great. Yeah. Um, but to remember we are as loved as a perfect father would love his child. A lot of us have trouble believing that. It's reassuring. It's reassuring. If you grew up in a family where you had to earn love, it's really hard to break that. To break that, yeah. So let me just see where we are on time here. Okay, we can wrap this up. Last question. When we get to the conclusion, all of you practically minded people got a lovely little Christmas present. Mm -hmm. Here are 10 practical suggestions for prayer. There again, rip off the Lord's model prayer. Use the acrostic ACTS acts to help you pray. Begin with adoration, move into confession, give your thanksgiving, and then your supplications. If Here's you what don't I want. do it in that order, but you get all those bases. Again, there's no red pen. All right. <laughs> um, but it does make sense as you begin to praise God, you recognize right. here's yeah, my failings. And I give thanks for your forgiveness. And now, yeah. Our worship service is kind of based on, on that sure. flow. Yeah. But yes, it's okay if you mess it up. Oh, I forgot Thanksgiving, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know. <laughs> I like the one place that says prayer is not an obligation. It's a gift. Yes. It's an invitation to find refuge in the Holy Ghost. Hey, I wrote that down on page 95. That's, yeah. Prayer is not an obligation. How many of us have prayed because we're obliged to? But it's an invitation. God wants to talk to you. Oh, amazing. I love that story about his dad. Remind me. Um, that his dad, he was always praying when he got up, but he told him that the first time he had trouble starting that prayer. And he, he set up, he said, okay, and finally I'm going to set my alarm 30 and minutes early. And he prayed, Lord, help me to get up when the alarm goes off. 
and the alarm went off, or he woke up 15 minutes before the alarm. Oh, and I was so excited to talk And he's with like, you. you know, I said, well, I said, wake me up, but not this early. But yeah. then the feeling you got was, I know, but I couldn't wait to get started. And I thought, oh, that was so cool. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. I think my favorite part of this book is the sheep book. When I told you that. <laughs> Which is, you know, when he said we're idiots, yeah. <laughs> we end up we're not, you know, the strong, wrong, and the other. Yeah. Go back and read a Shepherd's Guide to Psalm 5-3. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. We are, well, we, we like sheep. He is our shepherd. I mean, come on. But I, I just thought it was so interesting how he put it. Um, Sheeps are idiots, they can't run fast, they have poor eyesight, and they can't defend themselves, you know? Yep, that's us. Yeah, and yet he's our shepherd leading us. Yeah, and cares about us. Yeah. So just continuing those practical use of prayer companion, he suggests the Valley of Vision. I had a copy. They are gorgeous prayers. The Songs of Jesus by Tim Keller, I use that as a devotional it's a devotional on the Psalms for a year. It's fantastic. Um, I haven't used the Five Things to Pray series, but there's a pastor named Scotty Smith that has written a book called Everyday Prayers. Beautiful, down-to-earth, wonderful one-page prayers for each day. If you're having trouble getting started, a book of prayers like that can help you, and then you can kind of move from that prayer that you read slash pray into what you want to say. Um, what was the name of that? Everyday Prayers. And then he wrote, well, I'll follow up every season of prayers. And so there's prayers for Advent and prayers for Lent and a whole bunch of other seasons. Scotty. Scotty Smith. Yeah. I usually put it out during the prayer vigil as uh, mm -hmm. the Valley Vision and those, if, if that helps anybody. I like number four. Set aside two or three brief times a day for prayer rather than one long one. Is the problem that I want to pray for a half an hour or an hour, but my mind wanders and the phone rings and I get hungry and da 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 da. Quit setting yourself up for failure. If that's not working for you, you can work your way up to that. But I'm going to pray for 15 minutes in the morning and I'm going to pray for 15 minutes on my lunch break and I'm going to pray for 15 minutes at night. Look at that. There's 45 minutes of prayer. You're doing great. Maybe then you can move those to, to 18 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, you know. Set yourself up for success. Um, take a morning walk and pray out loud. Linda, you said you do that? Oh, no, I had never thought about doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah well, that would be... If I have trouble focusing I start praying out loud and it helps me focus. Now the good thing is I live alone. <laughs> you know, so I don't even have a dog or a cat to look at me funny. <laughs> um, okay. When I was in the hospital a few years ago, I had pneumonia. And I had, it was during, it was right before COVID. And um, so they had me quarantined. And that doesn't sit well with me, someone keeps burping. So, uh, and I was very sick. I was in ICU. They had me in a room and they had no window that I could see out of. So I felt like a caged animal. I literally looked across the hall to look at the sun coming in the window and I sit there and I felt like I wanted to cry, you know. Well, I, I'm an out loud prayer. And uh, my husband knows that. I go in the front room because he can hear me pray. I'm, you know, in there. I go out. I have to go in and talk to God. I talk to God when I'm driving. I pretend Jesus is sitting in the seat with me. I, I you know, well, that's a good idea. But I do that all the time. I go in the front, my front room is my prayer room, and I there's a little chair in there, and I'm like, well, here we are, you know, we talk. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, in the in the I was in there for 17 days in oh. ICU, and there was one lady who I felt like she was a guardian angel or something. She was always in there. But I told the nurses, I said, when you go by this room, if you hear me talking, just go right on by, or you can come in and join me. And they come, I'm like, well, I said, I pray out loud. And it, they they were fine. One lady did buy me a prayer shawl. Oh, I mean, so I can pray oh, with them. I love it. It was so neat. I mean, I, I said, I'm not ashamed. You know, I sit in there, I cry, I pray, I, you know. Well, you turned that into an opportunity to witness. Oh, yeah. And he was with me every day. And who knows sure who got blessed by that? 
I know I did. Yeah. Because I could feel him. Okay, I said, I know you're here. You're healing me. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I just know I'm not going to die here. Praise so, God. you know, but and I went home. You know, yeah. but you know, I just, I tell people, hey, if you hear me, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm praying out loud at Kroger. When we wore masks during COVID, my mouth was running inside my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, I had no shame. Your mom would be That's glad. Awesome. Yeah. I knew she would. I prayed with my mom constantly on the yeah. yeah. She would be glad. Set reminders on your calendar to pray for specific needs at specific times. Those of you that use your your phone, yeah, um, I know there's a lady at church. Um, she okay, set a reminder during the day, a little re uh, alarm that went off every hour, so that she could stop just for thirty seconds and pray, so that all through the day she kept being reminded. And I thought she was just doing it for a little short season. Um, and I, that's great. You use this pulls us away from God enough. Let's use it to pull us to God. Yeah. Pray in the moment with people. Thank you so much for sharing that. Can I take a moment to pray with you now? Yeah. I do prayer walking number eight around your neighborhood, your office, your school. I've done it walking around the church or walking around the sanctuary. Pray for. I think of who sits in the different pews. Get up to the baptismal font, Lord. Can we have some baptisms? You know, we haven't had one for a while. I'd love to do a baptism. Can you send somebody? Pray, you know, look on the balcony. Lord, we're broadcasting to the world over the internet. Pray for those people that, um, you know, are watching it. I don't know who they are. Um, you know, if you could use it in that way, walk around your house, get to the kitchen, Lord. Did you ever get any anybody write to you or call or whatever from hearing you? Did I just you? had um, coffee with a missionary friend of mine. Uh, we were in college together. She and her family work with Wycliffe Bible translations. They're working to do a Bible translation for a language in Indonesia that does not have the scriptures in that language. They're working to do that translation. It takes 20 years yeah. because you have to do all the research, what they do. You have to learn how to think like they do, you know, and so that the language just comes naturally. And sometimes you run into specific problems. There was one place she was telling me, they don't have sheep. Oh, wow. How do you translate the shepherd imagery from the Bible? You know what they do have? Pigs. No. Uh, we've got a problem. <laughs> Not very kosher. So what do you do? You know, things like that. Well, she told me when we met, because um, she was back in the States while her kids was going off to college and uh, up in Cedarville. So she was close enough. We got together and spent the afternoon. And she said, oh, yeah, during COVID, I watched your worship services. From Indonesia? She's like, yeah. Wow. Our, sound, awesome. our sound guy told me we had some people from different parts of the world. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we were blessed. How did Tom tell? He gets a report. He gets a report. From the uh, live stream <coughs> software companies on iOS. Most 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 live most live stream providers will give you a breakdown for your percentages of where people are watching yeah. from. But we we had people from parts of the world. I have no idea how they found us. Well, maybe the person who sends monthly donations to our church is one who watches us on the internet. So I can tell you this: once a month, and I got the mail enough that I recognize. Yeah, well, Judy recognizes it, Christine does, because she is one of the offering counters. We get um, an envelope, it's handwritten in block letters, no return address. Right. And there's no note, and when you open it up, there's $7. Oh, every month. Oh, every once in a while, eight, Sometimes every once in a while, ten. And you got ten, ten left. Ten. $7 cash. No, no, we have no idea who it's from. Right. Seven dollars. Mm -hmm. A five and two ones. God, and I say, Lord, bless this person. I have yeah. no idea who it is. This may be a stretch financially for them to give. I am not going to scoff at that or laugh at that or anything. I have no idea why, 
but I think we get a great blessing for that $84 a year. Yeah, and in Bend County, I've owned Bend County. Oh, for so years. Every year, yeah. it's been coming. And I know that that also goes to other churches as well, because I know money counters at other churches that tell me they get it too. So somebody in town is sending our something. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so maybe they, maybe through Bountiful Hearts, maybe through our videos online, I have no idea, but God bless them, right? That's why they ask them. God bless them. We, we got a great blessing. Wow. Well, so, I can tell you about your live stream during my foot surgery recovery. It was just a true lifeline for me. Oh, great. It's really important. Yeah. And um, because, you know, I would give strict orders to stay off my foot to go to the bathroom once in a while. Well, thankfully, so I you couldn't are, come to church, but. Thankfully, you are a, a calm, patient person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Ask my foot surgeon about that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that was a life. It, I could imagine people yeah. everywhere. I, I know we have people who can't come to church really at all, and they email me that they watch every week mm -hmm. and it keeps them up to date. Really yeah. important. Mm -hmm. And the Bountiful Hearts lunch that was very well, important too. I'm so glad we do it. Joshua, sometimes I have to apologize <clears throat> when I'm praying. And uh, we had a young man at the church I used to live in <coughs> who got cancer and was very rapid growing. <coughs> He was just, he was, he was the first <coughs> in church and he ran the uh, audio system. And he was the first one who would say, Amen, brother, and say it, brother. And I thought, how disruptive can that be? You know? And then I was praying for him when, when he got cancer. And I'm going down 275, praying, Dear Lord, you know, just burying my soul for him. And this guy cut in front of me and just, you know, just missed me. And I thought, you dim block, what is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, sorry, boy. Uh, you know, you need to talk to your son. He is going to cause an accident and get somebody killed. But now let's get back to <laughs> Karen, you were in prayer. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you called one of his children a dim block? All right, show of hands. <laughs> How many of you, you came to the worship service, you said the prayers, you sang the hymns, you actually listened to the sermon and got something out of it? I know it's a miracle. But by the time you were left the church, you've gotten into an argument with someone in your family about where you're going to go to lunch. It doesn't matter than a wet pen. Yeah. Ten minutes after praising God. Yeah. Or I've seen the, I'm ready to go. My partner is not ready to go. They have to talk to every living soul in the room before we're ready to go. I'm hungry. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, we do it, right? That's why we're still growing. We're practicing prayer. We haven't, we haven't accomplished getting it right yet. But yeah, prayer walking is a great way. Do it around your house. Let things remind you. Go around your neighborhood. Pray for different people in different homes. Walk by a school, pray for the kids, pray for the teachers. I mean, it's just yeah. use that to, to help you. I love number nine. If you have kids, let them hear you pray. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They need to. They need to see that's something we do. It goes yeah. back to his dedication and to his mother, Carol, from yeah. the very beginning. And mm -hmm. she prayed over him. And yeah. 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 And then enjoy. Yeah, every, before, every day before I left for school, you know, my mom and my dad prayed for me. Oh. oh. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was what we did. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was normal. And, and that taught me, you know. Sometimes it annoyed me because I was ready to go, but <laughs> God, I knew this prayer is, is making a difference. So and before I went to bed, they, they prayed for me. Give me sweet dreams, you know, no nightmares, etc. Little wakens up. <laughs> Sometimes there might have been a little of that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, enjoy time with your father. Prayer is a muscle that grows as you use it. The more you pray, the more you'll know how to pray, and the more you'll desire to pray, and the more you'll start seeing answers to your prayers. And I like, I read somewhere that if you do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit that is harder to break than to keep. 
So I challenge you, I'm finishing this book, to pray for five minutes, three times a day for 21 days. And see where the Spirit takes it from there. Just ask. So before we wrap up, it, thoughts, things you wanted to talk about that we didn't get a chance to talk about? I have a stupid question. Maybe you there are no stupid okay. questions. Somebody told me one time that you should pray to Jesus and ask him to pray to God for you as well. As well. So we can pray to all three members of the Trinity. So we see that in the Bible all different ways. Usually the way we think about it, we're talking to the Father through the Son in the power of the Spirit. So really all three members of the Trinity are involved as we pray. But you, more often than not, we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And the Spirit's the one who empowers us. But you can, yeah. I, again, don't let the, the mechanics and the semantics hang, hang you up. Yeah. It doesn't sound like they do. Yeah. Linda? I was, I went to a Tuesday night um, church service at a Catholic church, not long after two passed, with some neighbors. And the priest was introduced to me after, after the service. There was only a handful of us there, so my neighbors wanted to introduce me and told him that Steve had passed. And he asked me if. I had prayed for my husband. Oh. And I said, absolutely not. I mean, I was what? so appalled. Do Catholics do that? I, they pray to saints. And to their husband? But I've never heard praying to somebody that's not considered mm -hmm. blessed or divine in that sense. That's kind of a new agey pagan understanding oh. of talking to the dead. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, don't don't pray to Steve. Yeah. Pray to Jesus. <laughs> Steve's I great. Said, but I don't pray to anyone but my Lord. Yeah. I said, mm -hmm. and that includes me. <laughs> that either. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh he quickly dropped it. Good. Because you were appalled. <laughs> and, and good for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, my... but I, didn't, I was never aware of that. And I, I also know that because I've been, I was, my husband was raised Catholic and he had two aunts that were nuns. So I was aware that they pray for the dead for a period of time. I never really understood that. Like Maybe it's purgatory. Or something. That they talk about. Yeah. I, I. <clears throat> Protestant thinking, that's one of the things they jettison us. Um, Is that the purgatory thing? Yeah. Yeah. That they haven't gone yet? Yeah. That they still need to be purged, hence purgatory, of um, some residual sins before Where they're. Where does that come from? It's not in the Bible. It's not biblical. It, it comes from. Or is it in one of the seven books that's not in our Bible? I've heard there's some little reference they hang their hat on for that, but it really comes out of medieval theology, which is upside down from the way we understand um, <laughs> salvation. So, in in now this is medieval theology. It's been reformed that during that period of time that they feel like. They haven't passed on. It's I, not I don't they, know, but right? they, the they idea was the church dispenses grace to you through the sacraments, and that grace makes you strong and keeps you from committing different kinds of sins. If you commit a mortal sin, that kills your salvation, so you have to go back and start over again at the bottom of the ladder and start working your way up again. Um, starting with Protestantism, we turn that upside down and we begin with salvation through Jesus Christ, not working our way up. So, by putting my faith in what Christ has done, I am saved. Now I am working to become a more holy person. So, I'm worthy of that. And gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I don't need to pray. If somebody was a, if somebody believed in Jesus, I don't need to pray for them. They're with Jesus now. Which 
I think there's a lot more comfort yeah. in that. So. My, my girls were um, in Catholic school, not for the religion, but for the education of the parents through the public schools where they went. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and my oldest daughter and our oldest daughter's religion class, a priest was teaching them, and she said, he said, are there any questions? And Jackie raised her hand and she said, so where did you come up with purgatory? Oh. I said, Jackie, you know, there's, I love there's a way you can ask that might not. And she said, no, Mom, he, he liked it. He said, Jackie, I'm, I'm going to have to look that up and get back to you. Okay. Um, where did you tell the church? And she told, him, she told him, and he said, oh. And he said, could I talk to you after class? And I thought, oh, oh there it comes. <laughs> and he said, would your minister like to come and talk to the class? Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And he was a youth minister before he became our pastor. And Jackie said, I'll ask Dick. And he said, well, who is Dick? And she said, that's our pastor. Oh. Okay, well, you ask him and, and see. So she asked Dick, and he came, and he said, Karen, that was the best class I've ever, ever had. And so those kids were so excited to learn about different religions. How old, how old were the kids? They were uh, juniors in high school. Oh, wow. And then I was coaching the soccer team, and I had the girls in the car, a lot of them, too many, but a lot of them. <laughs> and we went past the little church, and I said, that's where Jackie and Jessica and their dad and I go. And they said, is that a Catholic church? And I said, no, uh, it's a Protestant church. Well, how is it different than ours? And I said, well, number one, they believe in immersion for baptism. What is that? And I said, that's where you, you go under the water. <laughs> well, are you naked? I said, no, that's just a good question. We don't need that. They're old and, and yeah. you know, and they just kept asking and asking. That's and, awesome. And, but then one of the mothers came up to me, and I thought, uh-oh, this was at practice, and she said, I understand you go to Bible study. And I said, yes, and she said, so what, what do we do in Bible study? Study the Bible. It's in the name. Well, we look at, at each book that we're, we're studying, and we, we get studies on that, we get background on it. And she said, that's interesting. At the end of the season, she said, Karen, we have a Bible study going on. Yeah. So I mean, that was all from Jackie saying, yeah. so where did you come up with purgatory? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, yeah. you never know where God's gonna step. No, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God was listening. we've got our other book study for this, summer um so at the, the last monday in july we'll gather again those of you that are interested and we're going to read another book by jd greer and they're available here to pick up this is jesus continued why the spirit inside you is better than jesus beside you to answer your question linda or uh, you just want him right there next to you so a readable, practical guide to the Holy Spirit. Ever want to learn about the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yes. Here we go. It's a book about that, and it's the it's just as funny and just as good. It's a little bit longer, but I, I believe you people. I know you can do it. So I got two days. Be sure to grab one if you're interested, and if you're not, I understand. We'll just publish the name of the people that aren't interested in the newsletter, and we'll move on. So let's close with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you that you want to hear from us, that you delight in hearing from us, that you enable us to hear you and what you want to say to us and, and how you want us to live. We pray that you would give us words and give us ears to hear and help us, Lord, to grow in our prayers and to grow in our relationship with you. I ask your blessing upon each one of these wonderful, passionate people here, and bless us in the month to come, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.